Last week I did a review of this quadcopter which contains the new Sharkbite uh, racing video transmitter and a lot of people who fly Sharkbite on the daily thought that the results I was getting were not as good as the results that they normally see. Uh, there were some sparkly breakup horizontal lines in my video that made people wonder whether there was some kind of interference or something wrong. A whole lot of people guessed as to what might be the problem, but we're gonna dig into it today and we're gonna figure it out. I did figure out what the problem was. I'm Joshua Bardwell, you're gonna learn something today. Before we dive into this video, I would just like to say that my goal is always to represent products fairly, and if not in their best possible light, at least in a reasonable light. Uh, I showed the footage of this, these test flights to Ryan Quellett before, uh, about a week before the video came out. Uh, he did say, hmm, that interference looks weird. Maybe uh, it, there might be something unusual there. But at no point did anybody say, this is a total deal breaker. Please don't release the video. Um, I'm not sure if I would have released the video anyway, because anytime a product doesn't look its absolute best, the manufacturer always says, oh, that's not how it's supposed to look. Please don't release the video. And if you, li if you always listen to that, you would never release anything that was critical of a product or showed it in a bad light. But I never want to show a product in a bad light if it's not truly representative of the experience people are having with it. So uh, when people raise the issue, I immediately dug in. And there were two main things that were suggested as the possible cause for this. One of them was that the tracer antenna that you see here, which uh, it was installed by Ron, when Evan Turner flew this quad at International Open, it had great video. It didn't have the problem that people saw. And uh, Ryan Quellett said that this antenna was not installed. Tracer only had one antenna on the arm, and he added this antenna uh, before he sent the quad to me, uh, just because he wanted it to be in the best possible shape but he didn't test fly it to see uh, if that was having any effect. And having that tracer antenna so close to the video antenna could be causing a problem. And the reason for that, in case you don't already know, is that when you have telemetry coming from the receiver, the receiver transmits telemetry back to the controller. And those transmissions can cause interference. And specifically, the interference that we're seeing is these little horizontal lines, uh, which are consistent Well with digital transmissions. There's an easy way to test whether that is true. And so currently I don't see those lines at all. Um, I don't see them at all. And so that might suggest that it's not the telemetry transmissions, because if it was telemetry transmissions, we would see them pretty much regardless. Uh, but maybe if we walk a little further away, then they'll come in. I don't know. Let me walk in the other room and just see if it makes a difference. No. Mm -mm. So, uh, at least... For me, I don't think that the cause of the problem that I was running into is the tracer telemetry. However, it, it, it isn't a good idea to have your receiver antenna so close to your video antenna if you're using telemetry. So either go into your TBS agent light and turn telemetry off. It's going to be in Tracer Nano RX General and no. Oh, come on, where are you? I don't. I know in Crossfire you can turn the telemetry off. Can you not do it with Tracer? <laughs> I guess not. I guess in Tracer you can't turn telemetry off. Go figure. Uh, that's weird. Uh, so don't mount your... It's not a great idea to mount your receiver antenna so close to your video antenna. It can cause issues. Even if it doesn't, it's not obviously causing issues. Move it over... Here. No, it's two point. Four gig. Anyway, move it onto the arm or something. But the other thing that people wondered was whether uh, it was Wi-Fi interference. And I specifically remember reshuffling my Wi-Fi antenna sometime back to avoid interference. Um, but let's just go check. Let's just go walk up to where the access point is uh, the, uh, and see uh, whether it causes interference. And sure enough, when I approached the access point, at first I didn't see any interference, but that was because 
I wonder if that was because the transmitter and the receiver were so close together that the signal was just overwhelming the interference. So I walked back some distance away and put the quadcopter down on the table and then walked back to stand next to the access point. And now, sure enough, the interference popped up. And that really confused me because I swear that I uh, reshuffled my Wi-Fi channels to prevent this. Uh, so the next thing I did was I went back down and I brought up my Wi-Fi uh, management console. And uh, sure enough, it looks like one of my Wi-Fi access points is on channel 149, which actually perfectly overlaps with RaceBand 3, the channel that I was on. I'm not sure how that happened. Maybe the, uh, the settings of the access point got reset somehow. Uh, like in a firmware upgrade, but the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move SharkBite to race band 8. Here's a little tip for you. Uh, the Wi-Fi wi channels in the 5 gigahertz band overlap with the FPV frequencies, uh, but race band 7 and race band 8 are both so high up that Wi-Fi doesn't go that high. Well, at least 99% of the time, Wi-Fi doesn't go that high. So if you want to, if you're flying by yourself, always use race seven and race eight, and you're guaranteed to, pretty much guaranteed to avoid interference from Wi-Fi networks. And sure enough, with SharkBite on race band eight, we don't get that interference anymore. At least not uh, until we get like right up in the access point. It is interesting that if I'm close enough to the access point, I do see small amounts of interference from it. That may be because access points, even when they're like on one channel, they're constantly like scanning other channels very, very briefly. So they have some small transmissions uh, that, or maybe it's just close enough that there's some bleed over, you know, in the same way that FPV signals bleed over. The only thing left to do though, is actually go fly it and see what the results are like when we're flying. And I am about to do that, but I'm not gonna put that in this video. Rather, I'm going to re-upload the other video with new flight footage that is more representative of what people are actually experiencing when there isn't a Wi-Fi access point transmitting on their, uh, on their frequency. I guess the takeaway though is that if you have SharkBite and you have Wi-Fi, you have interference that looks like I did, the likely cause is Wi-Fi and you're gonna need to move to a different channel. That's gonna do it for this video though. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks to everybody who helped troubleshoot this issue and happy flying. What are you doing in here? The least you could do is subscribe or join my Patreon or like just here's another video I picked out for you. Jeez.